uh, give a little give a little uh, talk on the purpose of what what we're doing, and why we're doing it. So, Guru Maharaj, we are doing this. Uh, sorry, I did not join yesterday class, Guru Maharaj. So, my apology. No, but it's not for me. It's for the general devotees. So, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, uh, this, like, this is the special, the most auspicious month, Karthik Damodar month, and uh, this whole Canto Ten, Chapter Nine, uh, which focused on beautiful pastimes of Damodar Lila where Mother Yashoda is binding Krishna and uh, by ropes of love. And uh, these are all glorifying Lord Damodar. So we can also have that uh, uh, desire in our heart where we can, by our endeavors, we can get Krishna mercy. So we can capture Krishna in our heart. Sorry, Guru Maharaj and sorry, uh, Hare Krishna devotees. That's like my brief understanding of this uh, chapters and that's what we try to glorify we read these pastimes because hearing and uh, reading Srimad Bhag Bhagavatam in this month is very very auspicious and recommended by all Acharyas okay stam stanyam kama asadyam manatim janatim jananim harihi grihidvadari Matanam Yadana Sadyad Prittamavayan. While Mother Yasoda was churning butter, Lord Krishna, desiring to drink the milk of her breast, appeared before her, and in order to increase her transcendental pleasure, he caught hold of the churning rod and began to prevent her from churning. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Krishna was sleeping within the room, and as soon as he got up, he became hungry and went to his mother, wanting to stop her from churning, the drink, churning and drink the milk from her breast. He stopped her from moving the churning rod. Hmm. So, Omagyanta Madanda Sya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurveda Maha. Ma Om Vishnu Vadaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Sarasvari Devi Gauravani Pacharine Nir Vishesa Sunyavari Pasyatya Devi Satarine Panchakalpa Thurubis Chakri Pasindu Vay Vichapati Dhanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyona Mahona Maha Panchakalpa Tarubis Chakri Pasinda Veva Chapati Tanam Pavane Devu Vaishnava Vyona Mahona Maha Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nitananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. So we continue with this wonderful pastime which illustrates the month of Damodar, or maybe Krishna performs his pastimes, the most sweet and the most deep pastimes of loving devotion between Krishna and his devotees. Here, Mother Yasoda, she's turning butter and she's chanting um, these wonderful songs in glorification of Krishna. The bangles on her, her wrists made out of different either silver or gold are changling and chingling and and it's sounding like a kirtan and so according to that sound she's also singing nicely and turning and what is she singing she's singing the glories of her little son who is krishna himself the supreme personality of godhead Although she's not aware that her son is God, she's still singing the glories of Krishna. <laughs> now, Krishna, and she keeps looking towards the room to see if Krishna is sleeping. And uh, she wants to go on with her work. And she wants to complete it. And so she's singing and she's chanting and she's looking and she can see Krishna from the room. He's sleeping within the room and where she is, she can also see him. 
But Krishna is really smart. He's not completely sleeping. He's actually, he's acting like he's sleeping. He's, he opens his eyes every once in a while to see what his mother is doing and hear her singing. And then when she looks towards him, she he closes his eyes and she thinks he's sleeping. So this goes on for some time. It's a nice exchange. This is described in uh, Shiva Ram Maharaj's presentation, his uh, Yasoda Jan Janani, how there was a real nice exchange and a very silent way between Krishna and his mother. Finally, Krishna can't resist anymore. <laughs> he wants to be with his mother. Her devotion is so strong that he comes to receive that devotion. So here you see, he gets up from his sleep and he runs to his mother and he apparently is hungry. He grabs her hand from turning the, the butter uh, churn and he wants her love in the form of uh, her breast milk. So then Krishna forms this and then we go on to the next first. Tamakam arudum alpa yat yat stanam, snena sutam sa sami ikshati mukam, atriptam utsrijat jivane na saya yag, utsing chaman ne, vashisi to adrish srite. Mother Yasoda then embraced Krishna, allowed him to sit down on her lap and began to look upon the face of the Lord with great love and affection. Because of her intense affection, milk was flowing from her breast. But when she saw that the milk pan on the oven was boiling over, she immediately left her son to take care of the overflowing milk. Although the child was not fully satisfied with drinking milk from his mother's breast. Purport, everything in the household of Mother Yasoda was meant for Krishna. Although Krishna was drinking the breast milk of his mother, when she saw that the milk in the pan in the kitchen was overflowing, she had to take care of it immediately. And thus she left her son, who then became very angry, not having been fully satisfied with drinking the milk of her breast. So that's it's indicated here that the milk on the stove is also for Krishna. So she's thinking. I have to take care of that milk because it's for Krishna. Therefore, Mother Yasoda was not unjust when she left her son to take care of the overflowing milk. On the platform of love and affection, it is the duty of the devotee to do one thing first and the other thing later. The proper intuition by which to do this is given by Krishna. Tesham sapata yukta nam bhajitam pritti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yena mamupi In Krishna consciousness, everything is dynamic. Krishna guides the devotee what to do first and what to do next on the platform of absolute truth. So one who is engaged in devotional service, Krishna will always inspire the devotee with the proper knowledge on what they should be doing next even though they are thinking about what it is, that inspiration comes in the form of Krishna within the heart, revealing that this is what you want to do next, and this is what you should do next. That is Krishna. We have to understand that Krishna is the, every time we try to think of something, the ability to think and to get the answer is coming from Krishna. So Vasya Chaham Riddhisani Vistoma Tat Smirti Gyanama Pohanam Chara. I give knowledge. I give forgetfulness. I give remembrance. Even for the non devotees, even for the atheists who don't believe in Krishna, whatever they're trying to do, the knowledge that they receive is coming from Krishna. It's coming from Krishna. Of course. When the non-devotees are performing things, their desires are mixed. Their desires are situated within the modes of material nature. And so the reactions and the knowledge that they get to do what is carried out is coming through the external energy and therefore not directly coming from Krishna. 
although he puts that energy in place. So here, Mother Yasoda, her whole life centers around uh, taking care of Krishna, loving Krishna, and doing everything that the child will benefit from. And now she puts him down to take care of the milk. The milk boils over on the stove. Srila Jiva Goswami gives an interesting uh, explanation of what is happening. He says that the milk started to boil over on the stove. Why? Because Krishna was drinking the milk of his mother, breast milk. And therefore the milk was thinking, wow, Mother Yasoda is feeding Krishna her nice milk and Krishna is drinking it. And Mother Yasoda has unlimited love and therefore she has unlimited milk. How will I get a chance to be used to serve Krishna? So the milk was thinking, therefore there is no purpose of my existence so it decided to commit suicide. This is uh, Jiva Goswami's explanation of this particular incident within this Leela to illustrate that everything in Vrindavan is sentient. Even the milk on the soul has consciousness. And therefore it simply reacted that I will be neglected, I will be rejected because Mother Yasoda's milk is superior and because it's filled with her love. But Mother Yasoda is not thinking like that. She's thinking that milk on the stove is coming from the cows and we made these arrangements for these cows to give Krishna the best of all milk. So why have to take care of that milk because it's for Krishna? So she left. So it's interesting here how Prabhupada explains that, that the intelligence that one needs to do something comes by way of Krishna within the heart. As explained in this verse that's mentioned here, Krishna in the heart guides the devotee accordingly. Now Krishna is not so happy <laughs> that his mother left. He was not satisfied and she is now taking care of the milk. So then we go on to the next verse. <laughs> Sanjita Kopa Spurita Nurnadaram Sandasya Dabir Dabir Dahimanta Bajanam Bidva Mursa Sur Risha Amsamam Raho Chagasa Hayangavam Antaram Gataha. Hmm. Being very angry and Biting his reddish lips with his teeth, Krishna, with false tears in his eyes, broke the container of yogurt with a, with a piece of stone. Then he entered the, a room and began to eat the freshly turned butter in a solitary place. Purport. It is natural that when a child becomes angry, he can begin crying with false tears in his eyes. So Krishna did this and biting his reddish lips with his teeth, he broke the pot with the stone, entered the room and began to eat the freshly churned butter. He is the absolute true supreme personality of God. He is the cause of all his causes. All of his activities are perfect and all of his activities are worse glorification. So now it appears that Krishna is acting in a way that is contrary to proper behavior. Is he or is he not? Well, Prabhupada kind of justifies his anger by saying it's natural when the child uh, becomes angry, he wants to do something in retaliation. And so this is what Krishna does. Why is he angry? He was so satisfied feeling the love of his mother who was filling his heart with her love in the form of her milk. And Krishna and his mother are both enjoying so nicely. But now his, his, the mother has left to take care of the milk and now Krishna is 
upset. So false tears, this is an interesting statement. Children, when they cry, um, a lot of times they exhibit false tears. The mother can detect that. Sometimes people say, oh, the child's crying. But the child, the mother will say, don't worry about it, it's, doesn't, it's not important. Because a child will cry false tears in order to get attention. And they'll do that. And, uh, but there are real tears. When, when the mother hears those things, she runs. Well, the false tears, they come, and that's what children do in order to get attention, or if there's something wrong, they don't like it. They exhibit these false tears. But Krishna did that, and he wanted, he was thinking, hmm, I'm not going to get fed by my mother. She left me. I'm going to do some something she doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> so he's playing the role of a perfect child but in that role he's enjoying that role because it's not it's, he's not an actor on the stage that's simply acting he's actually performing his pastime as being a little child Krishna performs his activities according to the different ages that he exhibits at a particular time. And they're all perfectly to his particular nature. So when he's in the, when he's in the mood of a child, he's a child. <laughs> and he's acting like a child. With this. And so it's really sweet. But because he's the supreme absolute personality of Godhead, his childhood pranks and mischief there are actually ways to, that endear the devotee to him even more. When children do some nonsense or some mischief and do something that is maybe destructive to something, uh, the, the parents get angry, the parents punish the child, restrict the child, chastise the child. They don't find it very, you know, uh, enlivening but when Krishna does it it's enlivening <laughs> because everything belongs to him everything is controlled by him everything is and everything is meant for his pleasure so when he acts for his own transcendental pleasure he brings pleasure to others at the same time so when he's breaking the butter pot He's causing others to have great pleasure. This is Krishna. And he did it in a very conventional way. He took a stone and smashed a pot of yogurt. And he then he began to eat the freshly turned butter, says in the solitary place. That was another room within the house. Okay, go on. Uttara gopi shrutam payam punam shrustam payam punam pavishya sam drishya jadarya amatra kam bhagnam viloka swa sutasya karma tach jahasya tam chapi natatra pasyati. Mother Yasoda, after taking down the hot milk from the oven, returned to the churning spot. And when she saw that the container of yogurt was broken, that Krishna was not present, she concluded that the breaking of the pot was the work of Krishna. Her report. Seeing the pot broken and Krishna not present, Yasoda definitely concluded that the breaking of the pot was the work of Krishna. There was no doubt about that. She knows her child has a tendency for mischief. And she immediately concluded in the right way. Krishna's gone. He's in the other room. Actually, at the same time, their monkeys are coming. Because whenever Krishna starts stealing and eating butter, the monkeys come, headed by the main of all monkeys, Dahilova. Dahilova is the king of the monkeys. And he comes with all his friends, and he's the first one in line. And he gets the uh, yogurt, the butter, that Krishna is eating also. Krishna shares it with the monkeys. 
And so it's, there's a mess. The whole place has got butter strewn everywhere. And uh, Krishna is, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's fearful because he knows that any, any moment his mother will be coming back. And when she comes back, she's going to chastise him. Okay, next verse. Ulu Kalangir Uparya Vastitam Makaya Kaman Dahatam Sichi Sitam Kayangavan Chauya Visanki Teksanam Nirekshya Sutta Agamach Chanai. Krishna at that time was sitting on the upside down wooden mortar for grinding spices and was distributing milk preparations such as yogurt and butter to the monkeys as he liked. Because of having stolen, he was looking around with great anxiety, suspecting that he might be chastised by his mother. Mother Yasoda, upon seeing him very cautiously, approached him from behind. Report. Mother Yasoda was able to trace Krishna by following his butter-smeared footprints. <laughs> she saw that Krishna was stealing butter and thus she smiled. Meanwhile, the crows also entered the room and came out in fear. Thus, Mother Yasoda found Krishna stealing butter and very anxiously Looking here and there, the crows, they noticed their mother Yasoda was coming, and so they left immediately. And so Krishna, he's distributing it to the bunkies, he's eating it. He's sitting on the grinding mortar, which he turned upside down in order to stand on it. He knows he's going to get it. <laughs> and so Mother Yasoda is there. And now she's very stealthily sneaking up behind him, about ready to catch him. <laughs> okay, so this is getting pretty intense now. We don't know what Krishna will do next. Tam atta yastim prasamikshya sarvata sabbaras tato viru ya prasasara bhitavat kopyan vadavan nayam api yovinam shamam pravistum tapaseri tam manaha. When Lord Krishna saw his mother stick in hand, hmm. He very quickly got down from the top of the mortar and began to flee as if very much afraid. Although yogis tried to capture him as Paramatma by meditation, desiring to enter into the effulgence of the Lord with great austerities and penance, they failed to reach him. But Mother Yasoda, thinking that the same personality got Krishna to be her son, began following Krishna to catch him. Report. Yogi, yogis, mystics, want to catch Krishna as the Paramatma. And with great austerities and penances, they try to approach him, yet they cannot. Here we see, however, that Krishna is going to be caught by Yasoda and is running away in fear. This illustrates the difference between the bhakta and the yogi. Yogis cannot reach Krishna. But for pure devotees like Mother Yasoda, Krishna is already caught. Krishna was even afraid of Mother Yasoda's stick. This is mentioned by Queen Kunti in her prayers, Vayam Bhavanayam Stitasya. Krishna is afraid of Mother Yasoda, and yogis are afraid of Krishna. <laughs> yogis tried to reach Krishna by Jnana Yoga and other yogis, but fail. Although Mother Yasoda was a woman, she was a, she was a, he Krishna was afraid of her, as described in this verse. Interesting discussion here. The great yogis, mystics, and sadhus, persons who drill the respiration, perform 
penances and austerities just to be able to approach the absolute supreme personality of Godhead. They are very much fearful that whatever they're doing is not up to the standard and therefore they're very careful and cautious. But Mother Yasoda, fear personified is afraid of Krishna, it says. That in one section of the Srimad Bhagavatam in the third canto, it describes that the wind blows out of fear of me. Death takes its toll out of fear of me. Uh, what is the other one? There's another one. Uh, death takes its toll, the wind fear. There's a whole list of items within the material energy re that reflect being fearful of Krishna, and therefore they're doing their service. Here, yogis also. Well, Mother Yusuf Krishna, who is fear by fear personified, is afraid of his mother, who's <laughs> chasing after him in the stick. She's just a simple village lady. <laughs> so, Imagine what is, who is this Mother Yasoda? What is it about her that causes him to run from her and, be, and become fearful of him? Okay, so we'll stop there for today. These are some of the more intricate parts of the pastime, which describes the essence of the pastime, Krishna stealing butter and running from his mother. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Uh, nice pastimes of Damodar Leela, astuteness of Krishna. So, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, comments, or realization, please unmute yourself. And if you would like to type in chat window, uh, I can read on your behalf. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Oh, Please accept my humble obeisances. So glorious to Srila Prabhupada and to you. Mm. As you were reading these uh, pastimes of Krishna, then uh, it remembered me to uh, our pastimes with Saraswati. So I would like to ask you if uh, um, Mother Yashoda treats Krishna like this. Should we also treat our kids like Mother Yashoda? Um, could you say that again? I'm sorry, I got diverted for a second here. Um, the question was if we should uh, take Mother Yashoda as our uh, idol, like. Um, Shall we treat our kids like Mother Yashoda treats uh, Krishna? With love. <laughs> mm, yeah, whatever he does, she's giving him just her love. And actually, he gets punished, but in loving way, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, you shouldn't think your mother Yashoda. That's true. Right. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. But in taking care of your children, you do that when, as a mother knows how to do that. Mothers have that intuition. They know. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't say me, me, your son is, you can't say your children is like Krishna. So <laughs> I have to make some adjustments for that one. But yeah, the love has to be there and also the punishment when necessary should be there also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, you can learn from Mother Yasoda how dedicated she is to taking care of her son. We should also take care of Krishna in the same way when we do our service to Krishna. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> As we can adopt that mood of Mother Yasoda by worshiping Krishna also in the mood of Vatsaya Ras. So that we do when we have a little deity of Krishna and we wake him up, we, we uh, give him a bath, we put him to sleep, we feed him nicely, we offer him glorification. <laughs> Very special. <laughs> it's special. <laughs> Is that Vishnu Priya in the background there? Okay, so what's going on? I'm hearing people talking. I think Vishnu Priya is there. She's her. Okay, so did you get that Mohanasini? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, you yeah. know, love is the is the medium by which you do um, take care of your children and how you take care of your children you that you learn you know because you're a mother you know how to do that mm -hmm. yes, yes. thank you Shridevi Mataji you have raised your hand please go ahead Thank you. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances on glories to Srila Prabhupada on glories to you. Guru Maharaj, this is another parenting question, like uh, somewhat like Mohana Sini Radha's. When I look back on my parenting, I really think I know so much more about parenting now than I did when I, my child was really, really small. And I didn't know so many things and I made so many mistakes. Um, but uh, does Krishna make up for all those parenting errors that we did for our children? Does he somehow bless them so that they don't suffer so much for, for what we did or didn't do for them? Not really. <laughs> Whatever you give them, it's going to be an impression one way or the other. No, it's not that he comes in there and adjusts all your mistakes. <laughs> he gives you intelligence how to do things. And if you don't take it, then the consequences are there. That time when she was small, I was not even Krishna conscious. I had so many mental health issues and so many problems. And it's only after I came to Krishna consciousness pretty late in life that too by your mercy that so many things, you know, became better in my life, but whatever happened to her, I don't know, uh, you know, how, how to reverse all those things or how to help well, her. Now. Look at the present. Hmm. So what's the situation in the present? It's good, oh, isn't it? Yes. Good. Yes. Okay, so you did something right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, know that. She likes Krishna consciousness and she also likes you. <laughs> she's, not, she's not running away from you. Thank goodness for that. Your mercy, Guru Maharaj. When I think about the mother I was, I just I have to thank Krishna actually. He really, I think he did some miracle over there. Okay, thank him. Okay. That's good. That's <laughs> thank, good. You. <laughs> thank you, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> so Hare Krishna dear devotees if you have any questions you can raise your hand or you can unmute yourself please Hare Krishna Maharaj Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Manjari, Hare Krishna, Jai Ho. Hare Krishna. The, the, unembodied, the unembodied voice from the higher realms. Okay. <laughs> you, could, you could turn on your video, you know. 
That, we recommend that. Okay, there you are. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Manish. <laughs> always has some unembodied message that benefits all of us. <laughs> Maharaj, as um, you were narrating the pastime, it made me almost nostalgic because you narrated the same pastime in Chicago and you were here um, for, I believe, like every Karthik you were here, like um, for a long period of time, you were traveling in Europe, but you would come back for Karthik somehow in, to Chicago. And um, yeah, it reminded me the first time like, um, I, I was um, sitting and it was almost as if like I could picture Mother Yashoda running after Krishna the way you described it. Like I can never forget like the impact that it had on me, like just your speaking. So I'm, I'm just sharing my gratitude. Um, A very, very beautiful pastime. He's, he's still running and she's still chasing. <laughs> 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 it's an eternal pastime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll see you soon again. I'll be back in a week or so, maybe. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to and and uh, thank the wall of the Wadi should thank Mother Leela Mantri. She sends all these quotes on the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Which I send to you, but it's only it's only coming from here. I just simply forward it. Um, now, if you remind me of the service every time, I um now um I have to remember to take it seriously. I read you one that I got today. A response from what I one of the things that I sent you. Something. This is what I got today. This is the one you sent the other day. It said, thus one should understand that the name Krishna and Krishna himself are identical. Having such faith, one must continue to chant the holy name. That's from Chaitanya Charitam Rita Purport. And then the response I got from one devotee from Zagra. Thank you, Maharaj, for bringing me back on track and fixing my consciousness. <laughs> that was the response after receiving that. Yeah. But devotees are appreciating it. Yeah. Many times I get responses from what I sent, whatever you send me, I sent out. Yes, Maharaj, I have to give the credit to Ras Rasika Prabhu. He's, um, he helped me a lot like to stay on course with this. And nowadays he is doing that service. He's sending those quotes. Who's that? Um, his his name is Rasa Rasika Prabhu. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. A nice, got a team. Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Oh, I hope you're well and everything is going on nicely in Chicago with Shishi Kishore Kishori. Marish Krishna's transcendental name and Krishna's Krishna Katha keeps the devotees on track. <laughs> I feel that's our only hope. There's only one track, and that is the Krishna track. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is a is a track that leads to a dead end. <laughs> very true, Marish. Very true. Krishna track. One time, uh, this was a festival, I think about 20 years ago, they did in New Rajadam. The devotees set up a railroad track and put it from the deities around the floor. And then it started with Srila Prabhupada. And so the idea is the track followed the devotees from Prabhupada all around and then when, and eventually wound up the lotus feet of Shishi Radha Shama <laughs> So that, that that is our that is the fast track. That is the best track. Um, it's also free. 
<laughs> if you take the other tracks, you don't go anywhere and you still have to pay. <laughs> so yeah, you pay you pay from in different ways. Very, very true, Maharaj. Very true. Uh, if we stay fixed on Krishna and, and chanting his holy name, serving the devotees as best we can, and then then Taktua Deham Purna Janmani 19 Mameti Sarjana, Krishna will be pleased to give us his full mercy. Yes, Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Namra. Please accept my humble obeisance to you. Hare Krishna. Uh, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Um, so, uh, I wanted to ask, um, it is just a follow-up from Sri Devi Mataji's question. Sometimes we, uh, when we did some mistakes or due to some circumstances or situations, when we go through some mistakes in life, we recover somehow. But then when uh, we start, sometimes, you know, after even recovering, we get those back in our mind sometimes. I mean, we think of them. So is that Maya conquering us? Is that mind playing with us? Well, it could be anything. But one thing you could, you could, you could always remember the mistake you made and what you learned from what you learn from it so you don't make the same mistake again the history uh, the past the benefit of the past is to is to learn how to live in the present the past teaches us things that we can use in the present or things that we should avoid in the present so reflecting on the past can help us so when things reappear and reevaluate, maybe understand deeper. Maybe sometimes these things are coming up again just to warn us that we might be again making these same mistakes. We're about to make that same mistake again. So we so, need to be more uh, cautious when these type of thoughts are coming to our mind. Well, we can use, we can understand them and learn from them. Okay, it's, it, that, like, it's, it's time to contemplate maybe when those thoughts come. Okay. Yeah, but then sometimes they just come up as impressions that are due to an emotional damage that this was created in the psyche and then that psyche reveals that emotional damage in the present because when something is connected to an emotion it has a strong effect the more emotional something happened in the past the more that impression stays within the consciousness that's psychological So uh, it's completely in the hands of Krishna that we get rid of those impressions, not in our hand, is it? We have to make an effort. Mm. The success comes by Krishna's mercy, but the effort has to come from you. If you, don't make an, if you don't make an effort, then the mercy is not available. You have to try. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Hare Krishna. 
हरे कृष्ण Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj I have one question Guru Maharaj while we'll wait for the devotee to uh, raise their hand uh, like one beautiful pastime Guru Maharaj uh, or like learning from this beautiful pastime is uh, that when we are engaged ourselves or we are doing one particular devotional service whether it's a chanting or whatever time we have allocated for that devotional service Uh, whether chanting or deity service or uh, preparing bhoga or any like related things we should not uh, move to other activity other devotional even other devotional activity we should finish that properly and then move to other otherwise there is a huge chance that krishna is going to break our pots of it <laughs> is that well, correct the, understanding guru maharaj that's the general rule but you can't follow that as in an absolute sense Because something may come up that needs to be attended right away, and you have to stop what you're doing. Can't use that as an absolute rule; it doesn't work. But that's how generally how things work. You do one thing at a time. You're uh, you're you're sitting and you're reading, and you want to read, and then you're. Uh, you know your uh, friend comes to the door and wants to come and see you and you say i'm too busy reading <laughs> i have to finish my reading and then i'll talk so you might think like that or you may even act like that but you know there are circumstances that doesn't allow for us to to finish how we want things to play out but that's the general rule one thing at a time that's practical so, so when we are switching guru maharaj to other activity or we have to switch to other activity then at least we should have that feeling in our mind to say uh, to ask for forgiveness from krishna that sorry i have to interrupt please allow me to engage in other activity that's good that's nice that's that's polite Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, yeah. Hare Krishna. Devo, that's that's respectful. Are you still dancing? <laughs> Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. All glory to Sri Lakshmi Pad. All glory to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for the class. uh in regards to uh, vrindavan nath prabhu's question guru maharaj um can uh, can i ask one question please yeah um so sometimes you know you get the the, the problems coming up when you are doing some krishna conscious activities quite a lot like one after the other you can't finish what you are doing and is it because our karmas whatever we we've done in past that we can't do some activities or is it don't try to don't try to mystify everything <laughs> it's like some crystal crystal ball type thing <laughs> <laughs> but then what did you try so much you know try everything doing properly so that nobody will disturb you it it's just the way life is that's all that's how life works you're doing something and something comes up it's, that's life <laughs> <laughs> i thought i thought i've done some math karma say i can't i can't finish sometimes my activities what i'm doing even i'm doing the aarti and then the the person comes on the door and knocks the door and you think are you serious now only do you have to come oh, early in the morning you can consult your astrologer and see what he says <laughs> you can see 
some karmic some karmic uh, situation there that's causing that to happen. <laughs> that's why I feel you could want to test. But generally, that's how life works. But if it's happening all the time, I, then you might investigate. <laughs> it's not all the time. It has gone much better now. Previously, it was bad. Maybe it's just just. And you haven't planned properly. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm bad. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stuff. Thank you, Stuff. Okay, Vrindavanath, we're going to sign off here. Yes, Guru Maharaj. If it's okay with you, can I just make one announcement for tomorrow class, Guru Maharaj? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, we are having two classes of Guru Maharaj tomorrow. That's Thursday. Uh, one Bhakti Sangha uh, class with Charlotte devotee at 12.20 p.m. UK time. So, 20 past 12 UK time. And that's going to be on Zoom link. Srimati Mataji will share that very soon. And second class is 3 p.m. UK time uh, being arranged by Ishkon GBC SPT. And Topic for tomorrow class is killing of Aghasur. And uh, Srimati Mataji has already shared Facebook and YouTube link because there is no Zoom link here. It's only on Facebook and YouTube. So two classes tomorrow. That's the announcement, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for today's class. Srila Prabhupada ki. Thank you, Vrindavanath Prabhu. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.